congratulations on Unsung Hero because it is genuinely a brilliant film. So congratulations. Well, that mean that means a lot coming from you. Hopefully, you felt the the Aussie roots come through. Maybe that's why I loved it a heck of a lot. But I have to know whether in making this movie, is it like the ultimate Mother's Day birthday present for your mum, Helen, or what was the, uh, the sort of inspiration behind making it? Yeah, well, you know, for anyone listening or watching that doesn't know, that this film sort of chronicles our parents. It starts in Australia. It actually starts at the Sydney Opera House and, and it chronicles our dad losing everything and he and mum deciding to pack 16 suitcases and grab their six kids and she was six months pregnant and move continents to Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm, I'm speaking to you from. And, uh, and uh, on, upon arrival, sort of losing his job and, it, and it, that's where the film really picks up, us kind of banding together as a family, um, raking leaves, mowing lawns, not knowing where the next meal was going to come from, playing cricket in the house. And, you know, the community and miracles and music really kind of carrying us through and particularly mum as well. So, yeah, I think in many ways you could you could make a case that this is certainly appropriate timing for Mother's Day. Uh, but really at the heart of it, I, I feel like it's a family film, you know, it's a family. Uh, it, it depicts our family, but really the family sort of rising up and and overcoming together and fighting for each other and so very proud to bring it down to our birthland shores on the 30th of may and it seems like the opera house now having watched unsung hero is a really significant location to you and your family because it's where some of your dad's success as a promoter happens but also where some of his unfortunately you know failures happen as a promoter and then as a lot of sydney siders will hopefully remember you as for king and country coming to perform there all these years later was that like a full circle moment for you guys then in one iteration of the film we actually had a portion of that performance at the epilogue at the end because uh, spoiler alert, but the film sort of chronicles, part of it is us losing our grandpa and not being able to make it back to Australia um, to, to say goodbye because of visa issues and financial issues and so on. And us playing the Sydney Opera House in 2019, which was the last time I was in Australia, by the way, which is so excited to come back, would have been his birthday. Oh, wow. So you just think of all of these like full circle moments and, and even coming down this time, Laura, this is such a full circle moment because not only are we bringing sort of for the first time for King Country in all of its might, you know, nine of us on stage and 96 instruments and curtains falling from the ceiling and playing more songs than we ever have played on, on, on Australian shores for more people than we ever played for but also bringing the movie as well. Like mm. that, that whole doing the premiere in, in your great town and then releasing it in cinemas. It's like, it just can't, it's kind of a pinch yourself. My, my whole family's coming down. I'm gonna celebrate my birthday wow. down there. And so it's just, yeah, it's pretty outrageous. It really is. Yeah, and, and both your dad and your mum, they do really frame the spiritual side of how you both were raised, particularly in that window. You know, your mum, we see quite a lot of how she gathers the kids, but your dad also has moments where he's got to admit, I don't think I got this right. We now need to pray, guys. Like, do you do you remember the significance of their spiritual influence at that time in your family's life? Vividly. Yeah, I really do. Um, and it was very real to life. You know, this film was so true that we actually plucked out the like inspired by or based on a true story because it's just kind of how it happened, you know. And um, one of the very key parts was we'd sit in a circle in our furnitureless living room. You know, we'd play cricket in the day in the living room. We just thought it was awesome as kids. We'd like, we yeah. play cricket in the house. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, we'd sit in the, the living room. We would pray for everything. And we just saw kind of miraculous interventions. The community really wrapped around us. The local church really wrapped around us during that time. And so, and, and I don't think it was such, it was so forming for our family. I just don't think we'd be who we are. I don't think we'd be in this country. I don't think we'd be doing what we're doing if it weren't mm. for those sort of vulnerable but pivotal steps uh, that we took. The, the theme of miracles, the theme of family rings so true. And there's a line, correct me if I'm getting this wrong, but what I think your granddad says is that if you, if you have a dream but don't let it be your master, then you'll be a man. Was, was that something that really framed the way that your dad lived? So my grandpa... Um, Grandpa James, um, James Smallbone, uh, would quote, it's a Rudyard Kipling quote uh, or poem called If. And he would quote it, you know, to us growing up. 
And that was that was sort of one of the pivotal lines of this quote. And so, yeah, it's depicted in him quoting it back to David a few times in the film. Also him saying to David, which is sort of the hallmark of the film in some ways, that your family is not in the way they are the way. Mm. And uh, which if I think if there could be sort of a, you know, again, a thesis statement of the movie, it would either be that or the bookend of the film, which is the Mother Teresa paraphrase, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family, which felt like a timely, a timely picture to put together for this day and age.